June to May of April. I was born in 17 February 1968 to the Royal Family EHM. And uh, I've attended other institutions, spanning from my secondary school at Yuku, primary school Yuku, secondary school Yuku, Auchi Teachers College, Auchi Polytechnic, ATBU, and uh, my MBA at the Federal University of Technology, Yula. Actually, I will let you know that. Uh, the king, kings are born, and uh, there's no way you will be able to shy away from it when the time, time comes. From day one, I think uh, if you can go, if the grand uh, child, that is the daughter of Ile Giono, which is my grandfather, the senior daughter will raise an alarm that they have given back to a king. Shouting that uh, my father, calling my father's name, he has given back to a king. This was uh, not uh, not just enough because people continue to caution. Ah, ah, don't talk like that. Say no. The, uh, the reason he has a reason for saying this. And so when I was a baby, they used to pass me around from women to women because of our of our unity in the uh, family. They pass me to various women to carry that uh, they will be calling me Zayaki, which is chief. Yeah. So from there, the, to the market, carrying some uh, goods, assisting my mother to the market, she will remove her shoe completely and uh, shout Zayaki, which was another talk again. They now told her, why are you calling this uh, young boy Zayaki? He said, no, he's the one that resembles my husband, my late husband. He's, he, among others, they gave back to them the age market. He is the only one that uh, resembles my late husband. It's okay, but you can call him Zaiki, not of removing your shoe. So as ages passed, they, they went to go and show me where they kept Legiono when he was uh, killed. Went to go and show me where they kept him. And they told that that place, I should not reveal it because they just want to show it to me as a chief. So I took all these uh, childhood stories, you know, and there was never a thing I ever took serious in whatever the discussion we were having. But again, that was it. We, on another occasion when I was in Yola, I can remember vividly, the Igwe, that is the Igbo chief, called me and gave me a chief testing title for my contribution to, to the service of humanity. And then when he gave me that title, during the reception, he equally pronounced, he said, I know that he is a priest, but I foresee him, the way he's doing now, going to sit in, he was going to sit down in the stool of his forefathers. Which he pronounced it, and evidently we see have all those uh, tapes. And again, from there, I became the chief of uh, uh, Edo, the Yola, as a chief, we have to go and inaugurate other chiefs again, uh, not east. On a particular occasion, we went to inaugurate uh, Abib Ekalefo to be the chief of uh, Bauchi, a new chief in Bauchi. And again, I met with uh, Jafaru, who happens to be my cousin. That one shouted again, Ah, the way I've seen you, ah, you know, after the demise of our father, the uh, MG Mom, Mom, late Momo Elegiono. You will be the next king. Then I told him, I better just go and sit down. I have other things doing. We are not on this uh, kind of issue. He said, No, no, no. The way I've seen you now, it's just like I've seen my grandfather. I said, You don't even know him, so there's no point of uh, you say you have seen your grandfather. I said, No, from your attire and your appearance. And he followed us to the palace that day, so I will do our things. We inaugurated. He was, he was very happy. He carried away. So this thing continued. That uh, there is uh, another time again, a young man who is assisting me to do some businesses came and met me that somebody mm -hmm. told him that I'm a king. And he came down, he had to travel down to meet me where I was, telling him that somebody he never knew in life has met with him, telling me that uh, he's a king. So far. Now, when I was nominated in the family circle, it was the same Jafar that nominated, no, no challenge. And the people continue to just believe. So it's the fact that my side me, 
I have other things doing. I was not uh, so keen about no do or die affair in this issue. So I continue to motivate my people. I will come down, come down to the village. I will assist in whatever best I could do. Make them happy. Make sure they are enjoying. You know. So all this I kept doing. I think we where we struggle at a particular time to generate this balance. When then our stool was being usurped. And again, I say, hey, no, I don't want to fight. I don't want to call. everybody to go and uh, go about this activity. Look for your uh, uh, things peacefully. I said, okay. If Virginia doesn't need a quarry, we don't need a quarry. In fact, they could belong to all of us. So everybody dispersed, went. But I continue to organize my people, uh, give, give it their faith. You see, there's nothing good you can achieve by violence. So because of that, we meet together. And again, when the right time has come, it was just like um, something that has been predestined is going to happen. I have to leave the office, take leave, go out, stay out, then uh, let them, okay, I will call some things. What are you doing? This, this chief issue, you have enough to eat, you have enough for But it was more than that. I felt that the entire community need to be liberated. Because we cannot have people who are highly educated coming out from this community and none of them have a voice inside the community. In the Boti Yakala, Ubeno, Ulele, Yowu, and the, the educated, we have educated uh, guys. None of them could have the word. And we are seeing that the community is getting down. The life is getting down day, day by day. And so these are other things, you know. How do we do? Do, should we leave our people to be living their life like this? Or should I even forget about the prediction with the uh, before? No, I think it was the right time that we are not talking about uh, just going out looking for money, money, money. We have to come back to uh, look for a way that we will assist our community. So, it was that sector where I ended up as a group administration manager with the Cameron's Charity Group. And uh, from there, I now came back again to take over the mantle of leadership from our, uh, in our community. I'm being married to four wives as a Muslim, and uh, we are all staying living peacefully. And by the grace of God, all of them are together with me right now in the community. We have all relocated down to the community just purely for community service. We have young men that are learners and they are outside most of them are outside we are young men that are black folks that are artisans they are here most of them are those are jobs so how do we move this this kind of society forward it's by inviting them for instance if uh, an organization were to come and invest in you first of all you get, you bargain for 100 percent manpower if it's if it's impossible you get a uh, 90. Then we push our people into the employment. Our youth will no longer go into addiction of drugs and other crisis. Very well. So those people will be traveling, will no longer be going outside. Yes. So they'll say we have to make sure that everybody is engaged. And I love I love the way our people are doing now. With the barista has set up a space by Sayama. He is now telling every every year there will be by Sayama tournament, football. So the youth who are again in football will be known. And again, we go further to promote them, to take them outside, to showcase them uh, to the outside world. So that again will help them. Then the barista and the, the speaker and the, our young man from uh, Lele Quarter, they have already, uh, what is it, uh, his name? Um, Clement. Clement Buffet. They are already bringing empowerment again down to the youth, empowering people. Not just the youth, but a lot of them that people that are, are, are out of jobs, who have learned uh, some jobs. Some are mechanics, they don't have two jobs. They were bought, tools were bought for them the other day. A lot of things were, have been bought for them. So this empowerment is what we'll be trying. And uh, it was our people uh, able to assess the opportunities within the environment. I think it will go a, a long way to help us to solve the societal issues. Grand Palace is it father of all unity hall, the mother of all unity hall. It will serve and then we want it to be so 
magnificent that it will serve us for the next 5,000 years before we start looking for another palace. So we want such a project where you So that is why we are looking for assistance from uh, all our sons and daughters and uh, all our well wishers to come in to help us to build this kind of uh, edifice which is now our dream. Development will never be hampered. Once we have any issue, this is a one is voted for the development for social purpose. We make sure that that is channeled for social purpose. So what is meant for the palace again, we channel it into the palace. We continue to make a thing. We are not saying Rome was not built in a day. So we are not just saying you build your palace tomorrow, tomorrow. Yes, since I've, uh, since I've been paid the okay, you go pay you. I'll be operating from my house and I have not complained. So we but we need this edit, that is what I'm just uh, saying. So whatever we use for development, we continue to channel them to development, which you have mapped out already. People should come back and unite. Unity, number one. Number two, our people should join us, those who are outside, should join us to help us to review the, the equal of our dream. That is what I